Hello, everyone, and welcome to Retro Football Knowledge. This is week one of the 1979 season. I'm about to unveil the new logo that will start every show. Prior to that, I just want you guys to know two things about the logo. One, I'm eventually going to be getting t-shirts and hats made with the logo on it. So if you like it, let me know. Comment down in the comment section. As usual, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you like the content and you like what you see, we're going to be doing this every single week following the season, starting with week one, all the way to the end of the postseason, and then we'll cover the 80 draft and we'll go into the 80 season and flow from there. I hope you guys like the format. I hope you enjoy the show. Here's a look at the logo, and then we'll start. Hello, everyone, and welcome to week one. A few things to think about. We've got a Bayou battle down in New Orleans between the Atlanta Falcons and the New Orleans Saints to start week one. The real question for that one is, is it going to be as crazy this year as both games were last year? Also, we have Dallas playing against the rookie sensation to be, the running back everyone's talking about in Otis Anderson down in St. Louis in a division clash as well. Then, another thing to think about is what about the Cleveland Browns this year? Everyone seems to think that the Browns may have a pretty strong season this year um, and could very well rival Houston and Pittsburgh, and they get a tough matchup right off the bat against the New York Jets with those two brand new rookie defensive linemen. And of course, the defending Super Bowl champions in New England, a battle of two division champions right off the bat. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens as we go ahead and get the show going. 1979 season kicks off in Detroit where the Buccaneers beat the Lions 31-16. Jerry Eckwood, 121 yards rushing. Leroy Solomon, 12 tackles, a fumble recovery, and a TD as the Buccaneers open with a win. Meanwhile, down in New York, the Philadelphia Eagles handling business against the New York Giants 23-17. 23-point second quarter by Philly. Tony Franklin, 2 for 3 on extra points and a field goal as the Eagles went on to get the victory. Down in Buffalo, the Dolphins beat the Bills 9-7, a low-scoring game, a blocked field goal for a touchdown for Buffalo. Von Schaum in a field goal. Zonka with a touchdown, 87 yards rushing in his debut back in Miami as the Dolphins win 9-7. Meanwhile, down in San Francisco, the 49ers jump out to a 9-0 lead, then 21 answer, unanswered points by Minnesota, followed by a great 49er comeback to make it 22-21 prior to the game winning a Ahmad Rashad 25-yard pass from Kramer, and the Vikings win. Meanwhile, the Redskins blow a 27-10 lead, big oiler comeback, as Earl Campbell had 32 carries, 166 yards, and two TDs in the 29-27 Houston Oiler victory in Week 1. All right, down in New Orleans, the Saints and the Falcons. Keep one thing in mind. These two teams played twice last year, and they were both close games. The Falcons winning both games on the last play of the game. A 27-yard Alfred Jennings touchdown and a Jim Mitchell one-yard touchdown. So let's take a look at the highlights. You see here... Archie Manning looked like a little bit of a false start, but they don't call it. Nice little back over the shoulder throw to Ike Harris. Five yards out, touchdown New Orleans, and just like that, it is seven nothing Saints. And you can see here the crowd going nuts as the Saints jump out to an early lead over their bitter rival. Meanwhile, later in the game, Atlanta doesn't do much with the ball. The Saints get the ball back. You see Ike Harris in motion. Nice little fake. Totally turns his back. Beautiful on the throw run to a wide open Ike Harris, bringing him back across the formation for a big game. Next play, the Saints, not done. Muncie, tricky Muncie. Little play action or little pass there to West Chandler. I swear you could have fair caught that football, but nonetheless, West Chandler spots it, scores, and just like that, it's 14 0. Now, down 14 3. Big throw down here, a 52 yarder to Alfred Jennings for the Falcons to get him back into scoring position. They desperately need a touchdown on this drive. And I'll tell you, Alfred Jennings, he they missed him last year. I want you to take a look at this hit. Dropping back, looking. They're trying to throw over the middle. Alfred Jennings goes up for it and get ready for it. Bang! They lay him out right there. A big hit. But Alfred Jennings doesn't leave the game. In fact, one play later, they come back. Little corner route, pump fake, and hits, guess who? Alfred Jennings, touchdown, and it's 14 to 10. Meanwhile, down 14 to 10, and back in the game, the Saints need to make something happen. So what do they do? Well, they go to their big, bad running back, Chuck Muncie. Great kick out block there by the tackle. Hits the corner, finds a lane, and he is gone. You don't get an angle. You're not catching Chuck Muncie. The big man makes it 21 to 10, New Orleans, as the Saints start to roll. And 
Atlanta fans are probably starting to get nervous right about now because the Saints, they do have some weapons on offense when they're healthy. But the Falcons, they're not phased. They got Bubba Bean, a little screen pass, fullback screen pass lined up wide outside. Good call there. Picks up a nice first down. Then, on a big third and eight, there's a quick little pass to guess who. You can see the little pump fake, not the pump fake, but the, the, the drop back. Eyes it the whole time. Alfred Jennings, again, wide open. Nice little catch. Toe tap and out of bounds. Big first down for Atlanta. Keeps the drive alive. And what it ends up leading to is a pretty big play here. So he drops back, looks, throws a nice little lollipop. Bing! Touchdown right there to uh, Francis. Sorry, Ron Francis. So, not Ron Francis, but Steve Francis for the Falcons, as it is now 21-17. to Good little play there on that touchdown toss to Francis. Again, I want you to take a look at this. Great pass protection in the pocket. Steps up. Throws, good little toss, great coverage, can't help the coverage, can't blame the coverage, but just a good throw. Archie Manning, as he comes out on the field, I want to remind you guys that he is the 1978 MVP and a good quarterback, a really good quarterback. And you can see here, nice little throw to, guess who, that man again, Ike Harris. Big first down, nice play. We're running low on time here, so the Saints need to make something happen. They want to score before halftime. So Manning dropping back. Another perfect pass over the middle to Chandler. And just like that, the Saints have a first and goal. I want you to watch this next play here. You can see it's perfect blocking by the Saints. Chuck Muncie doesn't even get touched. There's bodies all around him, but no Falcon bodies is key. Chuck Muncie in for the touchdown and a 28-17 New Orleans St. Lee. They've got to make something happen. They're down 28 to 17. So Bartowski looking, he's going to throw, hits Andrews, but they rule it incomplete. So now he drops back. He's going to go to who? Andrews again over the middle on the circle route. Big completion, a first down or yeah, first down, but they call timeout. So now they got 50 seconds left. No timeouts at this point. Keep that in mind. They've got to get in field goal range minimum before half. Bartowski barking signals, drops back, looking. Looking. Who do you think he's going to go to? Of course it's Alfred Jennings. Wide open once again for a big completion and a nice first down. Now they've got to hurry it up. They've got to hurry it up. Taking their time. They're kind of letting time milk because they don't want the Saints to get another play, but they can't be too careful or too conservative. Now you see Bartowski barking signals at the sidelines or at the line of scrimmage. Now he's going to go to the sidelines, which is what I meant to say as he hits Alfred Jackson rolling, but a great heads-up play by the Saints D. They tag him in bounds. Now there's no time for anything. They, they don't have any timeouts. They can't run a play. It's going to have to be a throwaway, and they're going to have to hurry it up. And time is tick, 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 ticking away. They're losing, they're losing it, but a nice little heads-up play here. Throw it out of bounds. Nice little diving effort by Jackson to go for it. Sets up the Mazzetti 43-yard field goal, and it's 28-20 Saints at the half. Great first half 48 points and Archie Manning continues to perform at a high level with the talent that he has at wide receiver it's no wonder now you see here the Saints are going to go back to the running game Chuck Muncie right up the gut nice hand on the block good run here nice job of picking up some big yardage you can see here there's a great kick out block you just off the screen you guys didn't see it because the cameraman got faked out but there's a great kick out block Muncie puts his hand on his fullback's hip turns it upfield but a great tackle by grabbing the legs. This sets up the rookie um, from Texas to set up for a field goal. Exerblin, I can't say his name. I'm not even going to try to say his name. I'm not good at pronouncing names. But what I do know is that kick, as ugly as my prom date, but it didn't matter. It went through the uprights, and it was good. So now it's 31-20 Saints. So back come the Falcons. They drive. They got an opportunity. Nice little touch pass. Again, right in the corner. That one to Alfred Jackson. I want you to look at this. As he's dropping back, you see that the Saints are bailing, so he's got time. He knows where he's going, turns his hips, and fires it just enough to not overthrow him and not underthrow him. Perfect strike as the Falcons are back on the scoreboard, and it is 31-27. to But the Saints aren't done. They come back. Deep pass. They got to get back into scoring range. Back and forth they go. Great catch by Wes Chandler, the stud in New Orleans. After the big completion to Chandler, Archie Manning puts Ike Harris in motion, does a little play action, but he's under duress and throws it up. A bad throw, but a great pick by Frank Reed. He looked like the intended receiver. So early in the fourth quarter, Atlanta with the ball. Andrews up the gut. 
Big run, nice little side shift, and rumbles for a big 20-yard gain early in the fourth quarter. As we go to the replay on this run, I want you guys to focus on the, on the Saints' defense. They try a little stunt here, but a bunch of guys get caught up in the middle, and basically they fall, fall apart and fall into one another, which creates the hole that Andrews then wisely spotted and slid to the right or to his, to his right to run through. So Atlanta's now got first and goal. They're moving, and guess who? Andrews up the gut again, and there's no stopping him. Just a monster back. Boy, is he a big-time running back for the Atlanta Falcons. And Atlanta takes their first lead of the afternoon, 34-31, on this run. Again, Andrew staying low, great vision with his head up, slips to avoid the contact, and the Saint defender just literally slid off. Now, New Orleans gets stopped. Atlanta starts to drive again, and it looks like the Falcons are going to really take control of this game as Andrews runs for a big gain again. And the Saints are desperately trying now to stop whatever they can for Atlanta. And that that's when Joe Campbell from the side comes. Big hit, recovered by Grooms, Elias Grooms of the New Orleans Saints. And it's a big stop for New Orleans. First down. For the Saints going the other way. Atlanta had a chance to put the game away. And you see the jubilation on the Saints as the Falcons blew a golden opportunity. You can see here coming off the ball, he Campbell just had a step on the tackle. The tackle gave up on him and you cannot do that inside the red zone. Big hit, follow the bouncing ball. So the Saints march up the field and they kick the game time field goal. It's tied 34, but wait, there's a penalty. They're going to have to do it all over again. So right now, emotions are just crazy in New Orleans as this rookie kicker now has to try and kick another field goal to tie the game. But that's what you do, right? So they line them up. You can see where the false start, or you can see where the illegal procedure happened right there. Five-yard penalty forces it five yards further back. So instead of a 34-yard field goal, they've now got to kick a 39-yard field goal. Right there again. It keeps showing it right there. So now from 39 yards out, can he do it? He does it again. And this time the Saints are forcing overtime. So now Atlanta, two-minute drill. Maybe not. They Remember, they, they scored early at the end. Nice little pass here over the middle. Big completion, gets out of bounds, big play there by Jackson. So now the Falcons, they've got to move up the field. We know what they can do in the two-minute drill. And you can see here, they're really efficient at passing the ball. Great pass protection. Bartowski has some good wide receivers, underrated wide receivers, as Alfred, Je Je not Jenkins, but Jackson comes open over the middle and spots the sidelines and makes a beeline for out of bounds right about now, actually pretty much as soon as he caught it. He was going to go upfield if he could. So Atlanta still trying to move the ball. Bartowski dropping back, looking, avoids the rush, decides he's going to run, pick up some big yardage, and boom, big hit right there. And boy, I tell you, Bartowski's hurt. They're going to have to call a timeout. Fortunately for Atlanta, there's enough time for them. If they needed to take a 10-second hit, they would, but of course they didn't. They had a timeout, which sets up Mazzetti, and Mazzetti's kick is, you'd expect him to make it. No good. It fell short. The big time kicker for Atlanta right down the middle. So overtime. In overtime. Oh, no. Snap over the head. Tries to make something happen. James Mayberry intercepts it. Touchdown, Atlanta. And that's how the Falcons win in overtime against the New Orleans Saints, 40-34. to What a difficult way to lose. The Falcons... Once again, a late second, a last second victory. Chicago beat the Green Bay Packers in Green Bay. The Bears D had six sacks and, and on David Whitehurst. And Walter Payton had 125 yards rushing in the Bears 6-3 victory. Meanwhile, down in St. Lou, the Cowboys and the Cardinals. Excited to cover this one. Roger Staubach opening up on Dallas' first possession. Good protection. Nice throw. Right on the money to Tony Hill, who got just torched. The Cardinals secondary. Great play here. You can see Roger dropping back. He's looking downfield. Guys, just treasure this because we're not going to have Roger Staub back after this year. He announced that this is his last year. He's going to retire no matter how the season ends. And to just have a season to watch Roger in action, it's going to be huge. Meanwhile, Roger dodges a defender. 
but can't dodge him twice. Ends up going down. That sets up a Septian 37-yard field goal and a 3-0 Dallas lead. Let's take a look at that sack again. You can see here token fake looking downfield, but good pressure on the outside by Neal. He's able to avoid him the first time, but he gets him the second time. It down goes Roger the Dodger. So they stop the Cardinals on Dallas's next possession. Um, Newhouse blasts up the gut for a nice 20-yard run to start the second quarter. Again, taking a look at this. Nice little handoff. Good trap block right up the gut. Nice move right there by Newhouse. And I tell you, he's a beast to bring down. And he's been one of the best running backs Dallas has had this decade. So, second and nine. They go up the gut to a relatively unknown young man, Larry Branson, who goes up the gut, or Brinson, who goes up the gut, the young man from Florida, to set up a new house, four-yard touchdown right up the middle. He had to truck his own player to get into the end zone. So, Brinson's run sets this up, but Newhouse's 20-yard run really is what allowed Brenson to get the big play. And then Brenson gets a big play, so they can't just not focus on him. And back comes Newhouse, another fullback right up the gut. Boy, he's done that his whole career. He's a stud. Otis Anderson's been struggling to this point. And you could see it's runs like this that have been really frustrating him all afternoon. Down 10 nothing. Otis Anderson has just been battling against this Dallas defense. But you can only keep a good man down for so long. And Otis Anderson proves that on this next carry. Nice little motion, handoff, great hole, but he just goes. The rookie, the big man from Miami, big time pickup, first down. He gets a penalty there for spiking the ball. I don't agree with that. A motion, the kids had a rough afternoon, and that was his first big play. But it will be the first of many. Nice down block. Great vision, cuts back as he sees the Dallas defense had over-pursued, and I think he expected to be gone here and not get caught from behind. Nice little spin, but a toe tap right there, <laughs> and Downey trips him up, and Thurman is able to finish him off. Now, next, the Cardinals, looking for another big play here. They've got to make something happen on this drive. Hart, looking, looking, throws to his main man, Mel Gray. Mel Gray, two feet in, and gets run over by his own player. But it's still good enough for a first down. But you know Gray's like, what in the world is going on? I want you to watch this play first and goal here. Watch the hands. Watch the catch. That's the big thing. What a diving effort by Al Chandler as the Cardinals make it 10-7, a big play. And you can see the jubilation of the Cardinals. Meanwhile, Staubach, you know what he's going to do. He's going to look for Pearson. Nice little dodge. There he is. Roger the Dodger avoiding over across the body throw on the money between the two eights of Drew Pearson. First down, Dallas Cowboys, and the boys are back on the move. Again, I just want you to marvel at the beauty of what you're seeing. Great head duck moves Guys, you have no idea how difficult of a throw this really is. Across the body, eyes downfield, steps and throws a perfect guiding missile to Drew Pearson for a big, big first down. And Dallas is back on the move. But, you know, here we go. Dallas looking to get a touchdown here. Nice little quick throw to Dupree. Dupree makes a catch. Look at the Cardinal swarming defense. Even though he stepped out of bounds, that would be key. Had he kept his balance, he would have scored. Instead, Dallas has to settle for a field goal, a 24-yard field goal. And instead of being up 17-7, Septien makes it 13-7 Dallas. But the Cardinals get stopped. Dallas gets the ball. And the rookie, Doug Cosby, great catch, but fumble! Picked up. Nope. Still on the nope. He got it. He did get it. And moseying on downfield. Recovered by Roger Whirl. Ken Stone with a great hit. Pops the ball out and gives the Cardinals new life. Remember, it's 13-7. to You can see here the Cardinal defense fell for the fake. That's what got Doug Cosby wide open. A great back foot throw. Cosby's got it, but Stone is on him. Knocks the ball. Just punches it right out. And Roger Whirl fighting with Tony Hill to get the ball. Scooped it up. Because he wasn't touched, he was able to advance it. And that set this up. So the Cardinals looking. It's just literally one play later. Hart dropping back, looking, looking. Plenty of time. 
great protection, throws, great catch by Twilly, Howard Twilly from Jim Hart, and it's 14-13 Cardinals. You can see here, he's dropping back, he's looking. You can see he's looking at the one tight end, he's looking at the crossing route. Then you watch his head turn, that's when he spots Tilly. Great throw, perfect pass, great catch, 14-13 Cardinals. So, the Cardinals' next possession, I don't know why this isn't a fumble. Great hit, Thomas Henderson, should have been a fumble, touchdown Dallas, right? No, they ruled it incomplete. Again, I don't know how you rule this incomplete. I guess they said his arm was going forward. The ball went backwards. It looked like he hit the ball. Big break. Big break for the Cardinals. But it is ruled an incomplete pass. Roger Staubach dropping back. Dart again to guess who? Drew Pearson. Dallas needs to make something happen now. So, now, after that pass, you see Staubach's numbers. He's having a huge day so far. We're in going to Springs on a toss. Springs, oh, those tricky Cowboys. Touchdown, Tony Hill. Dallas takes a 19-14 lead. And the defending, two-time defending conference champion, one-time defending Super Bowl champion, although not last year because they lost to Pittsburgh, with a great trick play. And this only works because the Cardinals have been getting gashed by the run all day long. Tony, uh, Tony Springs. Springs with a great throw to Tony Hill. But the extra point is botched opportunity. That's why I said 1913. Another missed opportunity. So the Cardinals have a chance. They drop back. Nice, beautiful throw here. But Aaron Kyle, boy, I tell you, I love this corner for Dallas. Aaron Kyle is a blanket on defenders. I mean, this guy is just all over defenders, all over wide receivers. That's his second interception of the game. Aaron Kyle had four interceptions all of 1978. He, he has two to start week one of the 1979 season. Big time corner for Dallas, but nothing comes of it. So back come the Cardinals. They've got to make something happen. So they hand off to Otis Anderson, the rookie, up the middle, and got to go. See you later. Touchdown, St. Louis Cardinals. Otis Anderson with a monster 70 plus yard run, 74 to be exact, as the Cardinals take a huge, huge lead on that play. They feel like the crowd's going nuts in St. Louis. They feel like they've got their guy, and why wouldn't they? The dude is amazing. Unbelievable run. Like I said, got to go. See you later. Here it is again. Great blocks, but it's the vision. Just, he saw the hole, made one guy miss. That's the only guy he was responsible for, and he did it. And you're not going to catch that man from Miami as he just darts into the end zone. And like lightning, it is now 21-19 Cardinals. Dallas has their work cut out for them. They got to kick off. We only show kickoffs for one of two reasons. There's going to be a turnover or there's going to be a big play. Which is it? Wade Manning gets it, hits it, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, all the way down to midfield. Wade Manning, the rookie, the Dallas rookie, unheralded. Big time play from Ohio State, by the way, is Wade Manning. So, Newhouse gets another carry. He's been having a good day. You don't want to see this. Immediately, I was worried it was the knee, but fortunately for Cowboy fans and fortunately for football fans, it is a high ankle sprain. He is not out for the season, but you think broken leg, you think hurt knee with, Tony, with Newhouse, and fortunately, he's going to be okay. Meanwhile, Roger. Needs to make something happen. Is it going to be another fourth quarter comeback for the Cowboys with Roger Staubach? Breaks free, runs, gets himself out of bounds. Another Roger Staubach comeback because this play right here is going to set up a sure chip shot field goal for the Dallas Cowboys if they or maybe a touchdown. Nice little run. That's all that was. Staubach audible, clearly audible at the line. Made it just a simple dive up the middle to set up Septien. If he makes it, Dallas comes back and wins it. If he misses, then the Cardinals are victorious. Kick up and through. Septien makes it 22-21 Dallas. Roger the Dodger with a great comeback victory. What a way to start 79 for the Dallas Cowboys. What a way for Roger to start his campaign off again. Another come-from-behind victory. 
Roger with the comeback. Dallas wins 22-21. Meanwhile, the Chargers depleted with injuries, riddled with injuries, but Fouts was healthy, 21 of 30 for 224 yards in a TD, as San Diego won 33-16 at Seattle. Meanwhile, down in Cincinnati, the Bengals, uh, it's a defensive showcase. It was 3-0 at half. Tom Jackson, eight tackles and a sack as the Broncos would roll on to win 10-0 over the Cincinnati Bengals down in Cincy. Meanwhile, Kansas City against the Baltimore Colts, 14-0 Chiefs. Ted McKnight, 10 carries, 79 yards and two touchdowns, including a 70-yarder, which means nine attempts netted one yard each before that 70-yard run, or with the exception of that 70-yard run. Chiefs against the Jets, or Chiefs. Browns at the Jets, sorry. Browns at the Jets. This is a big game. Down 3 th nothing early. The Jets are going to kick off. I'll say why it's a big game in a minute. You see here, this is Keith Wright breaking free for a big 45-yard gain. So this, the Jets just scored, and now they're kicking off. And the first time the Browns get the ball, it's a big return. So that's after Leahy had, like I said, booted his field goal. Now, Sype under center, looking, looking. Nice little throw, little over-the-shoulder toss, easy pickings to Pruitt. That's what happens when you start at your own 45-yard line. You get a nice little simple touchdown pass here. Sipe looking at the play developed the whole time. He's not looking at the same receiver. He's just looking at that side of the field, and as players come apart and come together, he's able to get it in there. That was a risky throw, but it was a design play. Meanwhile, the Jets get the ball back, down 7-3. Nice little handoff. Here to Bruce Harper. Bruce Harper breaking it, busting it. Big first down. So, again, you can see here it's a great little fullback blast. It's highly utilized right now by a lot of teams. And why not, when you have fullbacks that can run like Bruce Harper, why not give them the ball on a quick little hitter? They're going to focus on the tailback, and that's going to burn them every time. Now, the Jets trying to move the ball. They've got a first down. Things are looking good. Nice little play action. Lal Alzado destroys Richardson and puts him down to the ground. This great pickup by the Browns from Denver, and the Browns get the ball back. So now Cleveland marching, driving. Oh, intercepted by Burgess. Big interception there by Burgess Owens. A bad throw. Burgess read it the whole way and makes a great pick. Aaron Kyle had two interceptions for the Cowboys today, and Burgess gets one early. Meanwhile, nice run up the middle right there. Big play by Kevin Long. Gets him inside the five-yard line. Remember, they're down 7-3 here. They need to make something happen. Great little cutback. Great vision. Hits the hole and then lowers the shoulder to try to get the rest, but good job of tackling low. So now, from the one-yard line, Richardson keeps it, hands it. What is he going to do? The old quarterback keeper up and over. Richardson's in. One yard out, 10-7 Jets. Guys, this is such a big game because these two teams, they, had, they played an overtime game last year and it was close. And that led to some very interesting playoff seeding. So week one, don't underestimate it. Here's Keith Wright again. Again, a big return. Second straight big return after a Jet score. But that one only leads to a field goal, so it's 10 to 10. Cockroft hits a 31-yard field goal, so they kick it to Wright again to start the second half. Stop kicking to this man. 50-yard return for Keith Wright. He is killing the Jets single handedly so now the Browns again a very short field when you only have to go 50 yards you can see everyone right now is loving Keith Wright from Memphis State Cleveland driving up the field nice little play action Sipe to arguably the best tight end in football Ozzie Newsom easy pickings 17 yard touchdown what a throw I tell you what I love about Ozzie Newsom I love the fluidness in which he runs a route. Great fake here by Sipe. Covered the ball. That's perfect play action, kids. If you're watching at home, take this tape and learn from it. It was beautiful. And Ozzie Newsom just makes it look so effortless. You can see here, Ozzie hitting the corner. Eye on the ball the whole time. He's never lost it. Looks it all the way into his hands. Two feet in. Great play. Jets, meanwhile, Durking, trying to get the Jets back in the game after a missed extra point down 16-10, and bust a big one 50 yards. Big 50-yard run by Durking. That would set up a Leahy 24-yard field goal. It's now 16-13, but back come the Browns. I can't even keep up. Keith Wright with a big gain. And again, here's an example of what Keith Wright brings to the table. He's not a starting wide receiver, but he's been a big playmaker in this game. Great job of avoiding the tackler, stays in bounds, and gets as much as he can, and then gets the first down as well. 
Big play there, and that's going to set up this play right here by Reggie Rucker. What a catch right there by Reggie Rucker over the middle. I, I think Jackson can't even believe it. He's like, he, there's no way he caught that. No, he did catch it, and it led to a field goal. It's 19-13. So back come the Jets. Richardson to Kevin Long over the middle. Circle route. Go! He almost broke that one. All the way down inside the red zone for the Jets. And now they're gonna the, the crowd in New York at Shea is going crazy. The Jets have all this momentum. Great circle route. The ball was even partially deflected. But again, I go back to why I said this is a big game. Week one, these two teams are not in the same division. So wild card seeding is now a factor with this new round of the playoffs that's been incorporated. You don't have to win your division to get in. Meanwhile, Long understands that. Takes the ball up the middle. Nice little four-yard touchdown run. And just like that, the Jets now have a nine. It's now 19-19. So surely, that's it, right? They're going to take the lead? Are you kidding me? He misses it. A missed extra point. It's 19-19. Here's the next kickoff. Oh, they did kick it away from right. And it's a fumble. Unbelievably, Ricky Fletcher on the return fumbles the ball and it's recovered by the Jets. That sets up this Leahy field goal from 24 yards out. You can't make an extra point, but you make a 24-yard field goal. Make up your mind, Leahy. What's going on? So the Browns down 22-19. Need to make something happen. Big pass up the middle. But it or to the side, but it's intercepted once again by the Jets. This time, Schaefer Suggs picks it off with 2.30 to go. Ball game, right? It's over. There's no way the Browns are going to win this game. There's 2.30 to go. All the Jets have to do is run the ball out. But they do get the ball back. What a great pick. Just look at that effort. Up and over, stole it from Ozzie Newsom, and then tries to get a big return. I believe they did rule him down at where he was though when he caught the football but still you gotta love the effort but the Browns do get the ball back with 31 seconds a couple plays and now it's 15 seconds Sipe looking looking throws great bobbling sideline catch by by Logan David Logan had five receptions for 94 yards today but here's the big thing I want you to look at this. He throws this up. David Logan's a big man, and he's able to use his height. He tips it away from the defender, then resets his feet and catches it. That was done deliberately, but you don't see it there except for a little bit on the tail end. There's a penalty because Mark Gassineau, the rookie from Oklahoma, Arizona State, got the penalty. He hit him, and he hit him late. Um, helmet. Big shot, sets him up 15 yards closer. Now Cockroft is able to boot it through as time expires and force overtime. So it's 22-22. Now, Leahy in overtime has a chance to win it. Horrible. That's just horrible. Leahy's better than that. Terrible miss kick. That gives Sipe an opportunity. So, Sipe dropping back, looking, throws, big completion, and a smack on Ozzie Newsome. What a hit by Jackson. I mean a shot right there. Look at this again. Eye on the ball, totally concentrated, body leaning one direction after the hit, flies in the opposite direction, shoulder to chest, perfect hit. It's worth watching again. Just unbelievably, boom, right there, down he goes. Ozzie Newsome, dazed and confused, but only out for one play. He'll come back. They still have to punt. And they block it! It's blocked by Donald Dykes. The Jets recover it or did the fumble? Wait, I think no, the Browns got No, the Jets got it. No, the Browns. It doesn't matter. Brown, it, who's got the ball? No one knows who has the ball right now. Here's a funny thing. While they're fighting to see who has the ball, it doesn't matter. The block, there was no clear possession by the Jets. It's going to be the Jets' ball whether the Browns recover it or not. Up the gut. What a block by Dykes, though. Avoids the punter to boot, pun intended, picks up the ball, bobbles it. This is why punters are not football players. They're just kickers. Um, they, they, they can't do anything athletically well. The Jets never fully recovered, like I said, and they fall on the football. Uh, eventually, they do rule that they get it. So back come the Jets. Now they got a simple play. Dropping back, throw, intercepted, intercepted by Oliver Davis of the Cleveland Browns, one of the big-time corners. He has been he's been much maligned today covering Wesley Walker, but that that was a big interception by Oliver Davis. You can see here 
Richardson, who struggled throwing the ball deep all day, it looked like he was throwing to Oliver Davis, for crying out loud. He looked like the intended receiver. Now, keep two things in mind. There's only 40 seconds left to go in overtime right now, okay? Or, I mean, there's only like... One minute left to go in overtime right now. This interception, the ball wasn't hit, the hand wasn't hit. Just a great throw right there to Oliver Davis, for lack of a better word, as Oliver Davis takes the ball and returns it into field goal range. Again, there's only a minute left, so the Browns don't have a lot of time. So who's Sype going to go to? Who else? Logan, sideline, catch. Like I said, five catches for 94 yards today. He had a big, big day. And that, ladies and gentlemen, with 45 seconds to go, the Browns don't make this field goal. It's tied. Cockroft boots it, and it's good. From 27 yards out, Browns win it 27-24. Unbelievable, crazy ending to a crazy game as the Browns win it 25-22 in overtime at New York. Meanwhile, the Rams against the Raiders in L.A. The Rams led 14-0, then 17-14 before losing 24-17. Lester Hayes, an interception, and four pass deflections, and five tackles as the Raiders get to a 1-0 lead, 1-0 record. The Steelers at the Patriots. The two, two, th These two teams won their divisions respectively last year, and we're getting ready to kick off. Well, once again, we only show a kickoff for one reason. Alan Clark back deep, opening kickoff of the second half. Fields it, great return, finds a seam, crease up the gut, big gain, first down, gives them a lot of momentum. Steve Grogan dropping back, looking, little side dodge of Cole, I mean I'm, of Greenwood, throws, nice completion of Russ Francis there, big first down. So Greenwood misses here, we're going to see this again coming up. And I want you to look at just the simple little hip swivel, this is what a mobile quarterback can do for you. Nice little move, makes him miss. Turns around, throws over Donnie Shell right to Russ Francis, big first down. Now, how do you get that open, you might ask? Well, let's look at Russ Francis here. He gets a nice lean. They don't really bump him off the line of scrimmage, and you have to bump a man like Russ Francis. He's too big of a target and too important to the offense. New England, nice little play action. Rush coming, throws off his back foot, wide open Russ Francis. They threw right where they blitzed. He was open, makes the easy catch, touchdown New England. You can see here the play action. They blitzed the side with Wagner. Wagner normally would be there, but he blitzed. Francis is open. Nice play. And again, we could see there's a bump this time off the, off the line, but they don't hold him too much. And because Wagner vacates the area, Francis is like, hey, hey, throw me the ball. Let me get this. And then a great, nice little one-handed, near one-handed snap as the Patriots jump out to a 7-0 lead. Next drive after stopping Pittsburgh. Grogan rolling out. Nice throw. Hit. Intercepted Jack Lambert off the deflection and a big first down for the defending Super Bowl champion Pittsburgh Steelers. Bad move there because it swung the momentum to New England's favor. Bradshaw dropping back. Looking. Looking. Throws deep. Big completion over the middle of the Swanee. But Lynn Swan gets upended big time. You can see Bradshaw looking at Stallworth, then he comes back. He knows exactly where he's going and when to go there. But boy, what a big hit there by Fox as Swan goes and gets upended. Nice free release here. He's open. He has Claiborne beat, jumps up into the air, and then Fox takes him out from behind. So what do they do on the, later in that drive? Nice little handoff. Sidney Thornton blast up the middle, powers through. You see the hole there. It was massive. And now, Missed extra point by the rookie kicker. Remember, they drafted Matt Barr to fix their special teams woes from a year ago. Very few moments in a professional sports environment where a player understands the importance that they had to a city and the city understands the importance that they have to a player. On Monday night against the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New England Patriots in Foxborough, that moment made itself very apparent before all watching all over the United States on Monday night. It was amazing to watch. Rather than me giving you the details on what happens, I'm going to let the Monday night crew touch on that moment. I want you to listen to it and I want you to really appreciate it because it is probably one of the most touching moments that I've seen in my professional sports life as an announcer, as a person watching sports. I can only hope that this moment gets remembered for the beautiful significance that it displayed on this Monday night. I'll let you go ahead and take a listen now.
Daryl Stingley, whom you will hear from at halftime in an interview with Howard Cosell, making his first return visit. There's an absolute capacity crowd here, a standing ovation for number 84, who was injured, of course, tragically, last October, August the 12th. He has returned home. He is going to be executive director of playing personnel, has a very optimistic outlook on his future, has regained movement in his right hand after being fully paralyzed for so long. And as I said, you will hear from him at halftime. This is a moment to remember as one pans the stands, looks at these people, one realizes what an athlete can come to mean to a population. And this has been a remarkable athlete, number 84, Daryl Stingley. And it happened on August 12th, a year ago, the collision with Jack Tatum. Not only were the fans applauding his teammates on the sidelines, facing up to the press box, applauding number 84. I suppose it's impossible to really try to imagine what's going through his mind. It's, it's something that's so far beyond most of us. Well, when you meet him at halftime, you'll see the kind of young man he is. Uh, another special kind of courage. Owner Billy Sullivan announcing today that he would be the executive director of playing personnel for New England. He wants to scout college personnel. Plans in the coming future, whether it be one year, two years, five years, to be able to move around the country, look at film, see young college players. Those faces are lit up. And from the way Daryl was greeted, when they wheeled him in, as the tears roll down his face, you know what they meant to and those players, they poured in to see him. Let the moment speak. I suppose it would continue for many, many more minutes. Darrell, I'm sure, would not want that to be. The ovation continues as play. Well, it cannot be resumed as Steve Grogan obviously cannot call the snap numbers. And Grogan leads his teammates away from the line of scrimmage, applauding Daryl Stingley. Okay, so after that moment, the Patriots, they seem jacked up. Nice throw over here to a, I mean, a perfect throw. Probably the best throw of the night by Grogan while under pressure to Stanley Morgan. A great catch on the side. You can see here he's under duress. He does peek at the rush before he lets it go. Throws a perfect strike. 
over one defender, just past another, right into the shoulder pad of Stanley Morgan. Like I said, a great play, and that would set up this field goal right here through the uprights and a 10, a big 10-6 lead by John Smith. Now, rookie Larry Anderson back deep, fields it at the 1. Big return to the 20. Cuts it upfield, makes a guy miss, 30, 35, 40, and then gets bumped out of bounds at about the 46-yard line. Pretty big return. Pittsburgh feeling pretty good. They got good field position, but New England's defense, you have to give credit where credit's due. Their defense prevails and holds Pittsburgh once again as the Patriots get the ball back. Grogan goes to old reliable, his number one target, Russ Francis. Nice shot over the middle. Big first down. I tell you, this tight end is big time in New England. And he, they are real lucky to have a, a tight end of his caliber. Not only does he have height, but he has great hands, makes a great catch, and picks up a key first down here to keep momentum going. And again, you can see, even though they got a bump on him, and they're holding him at this point, Cole holding him, Lambert gets him over the middle, passed him off perfectly. It didn't matter. Russ Francis gets the big, big play. And again, from this angle, you can see Grogan, perfect throw. Under duress, nice spiral, Francis goes up and gets it, led him perfectly. That would lead to another John Smith field goal, and it would be 13-6 to New England. Now, late in the fourth quarter, a poor punt here by Hare. Rattled all day with pressure. This was his worst punt of the day, and it would prove to be fatal to New England. Now up 13-6, to they desperately needed that punt to go and get them out of trouble, but instead it put Pittsburgh in great position. So, Bradshaw, struggling all day, finally goes to John. Nice little completion down to the 21-yard line. Then, nice little play-action pass, dropping back, looking over the middle. Wide open, Sidney Thornton. Nobody covered him. And why would you? You've got Cunningham. You've got Grossman. You've got Swan. You've got... All these players that go to, why would you cover Thornton? And Thornton isn't done yet. Big run up the middle. We're now in overtime. It's 13-13. Sidney Thornton with a blast up the middle. Then they go to Franco. Nice little move here off tackle. Nice little skip. Good tackle there to keep him in bounds, but it's too late. They're in field goal range, and Bradshaw's not done. He's going to drop back. He's going to throw a little, nice little toss here to Thornton. Thornton gets him to the hash where they need to go. Gets a couple extra yards, moves him closer for Matt Barr, the rookie kicker, is now going to come on. A man that's already missed an extra point and made an extra point. This is his first career field goal, and it's money. Right through the uprights, Matty Barr boots it through. Pittsburgh wins in overtime from 41 yards out, 16-13, to 13 in just a great, great game as the Pittsburgh Steelers Advanced. Now, I want to take a look at the standings as we go through here. The NFC East is breaking down pretty simply. Philly with a 1-0 lead, Dallas with a 1-0 lead, Washington, St. Louis, and New York all 0-1. In the Central, Tampa and Minnesota are both sitting pretty at 1-0, along with Chicago as a surprise. Detroit and Green Bay, no surprise there, both 0-1. On to the NFC West. Atlanta 1-0. The rest of the division is 0-1. New Orleans, San Francisco, LA are all sitting at 0-1. It's nothing to get excited about if you're Atlanta, but it's a nice start to a season. you got a division win on the road, and you're the only team in the division to win. They're sitting pretty at 1-0. Oh. Moving on to the AFC, we'll start with the AFC Eastern Division. Miami is 1-0. Oh. The Jets, 0-1. Oh the Patriots, 0-1. Oh the Bills, 0-1. Oh the Colts, 0-1. Oh Inexplicably, everyone's 0-1 oh but Miami. In the Central, much different picture. Houston, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, all 1-0. Oh. Cincinnati, 0-1. Oh be interesting to see how that division breaks down as those three teams could be competing all year long. And then finally, we move to the AFC West. The San Diego Chargers 1-0, the Kansas City Chiefs 1-0, the Denver Broncos 1-0, the Oakland Raiders 1-0. The only team that hasn't won is the Seattle Seahawks who are 0-1. So as you can see, week one was extremely exciting. Lots going on, lots of excitement, but at the end of the day, we're going to have to wait and see how this season breaks down. But I'll tell you guys, you couldn't, have ex you couldn't have asked for a better week one. Three overtime games, and we were lucky enough to, to cover two of the three of them. Just a fun, entertaining week, beginning to end. And actually, we had all three of them, now that I think about it. We, had, we covered all three overtime games. And those were the, to have three overtime games week one is pretty amazing. But you also had some upsets with the Rams losing to Oakland. You also had... Some 
expected performances. San Diego expected to win despite all the injuries, but it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win big like they did. Just overall, Pittsburgh, you know, New England, we got the game that we expected with a pretty cool moment. Let's not sleep on what the Minnesota Vikings did, having to come from behind twice despite not having Fran Tarkenton. Are the 49ers that bad or is Minnesota that good? Time will tell. That is a wrap for Retro Football Knowledge. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Week 2, coming up next week, we'll cover, again, all the games and we'll do our analysis and give our input. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe once again. I'm Anthony Manna. This is Retro Football Knowledge. Week 1 of the 1979 season. What a, what a week. Looking forward to Week 2. See you next week.